Hey, Houston, this is Charlie Bolden. How do you read? Houston, this is Charlie Bolden. How do you read? Clear. Welcome aboard International Space Station. Hey, Butch, how you doing? We're doing great, sir. How about y'all? Ah, uh, okay. I'm glad we didn't go through all the protocols and everything, but I'm going to let, what I'm going to ask you to do, Butch, is introduce yourself and the rest of your crew members there. Samantha, it's great to see you. This is the first time I've had a chance to talk to you. We have a group of school students down here from elementary all the way up through high school. Any college students? No. Uh, and they really are anxious to ask you some questions, so I'm going to turn it over to you to introduce yourself and your crew, and then we'll get right into the questions, if that's okay with you. And tell us a little bit about what's going on today. Outstanding, General. Yeah, absolutely. I'm uh, Navy Captain Barry Wilmore, call sign Butch. That's why uh, he keeps calling me Butch. And uh, I've been up here for four months. I launched on a Soyuz 40S and uh, was joined by these folks right here a couple of months ago. I'm going to let her introduce themselves. I'm Air Force Colonel Terry Burtz, and uh, I launched in November with Samantha on Soyuz 41S from Baikonur in Kazakhstan. Uh, we've been here for about two months, and we've been very busy doing a lot of experiments and science and also getting uh, maintenance done, getting, keeping the space station in working order. And I'm Italian Air Force Captain Samantha Cristoforetti, and uh, of course I came here about two months ago with uh, Terry, and uh, same as Terry, I'm uh, enjoying my time up here, doing a lot of science, um, doing all kinds of uh, interesting scientific research, and uh, enjoying floating a lot. <laughs> Great. Well, Terry, Butch, Samantha, I'm now going to turn so, it over to the So, somebody's got a question. Terry, we do, and here they come. And you can step right out here. They, they can't see you, my name is Latrice, and life is, is life in space hard, or is it easy? Is life in space hard, or is it easy? Well, it depends on what you're doing. <laughs> Some things are, I would say nothing's hard. We're very, very well trained, uh, prepared well for all different aspects, the launching, uh, the, the different uh, uh, science and, and protocols and things that we do, maintenance that we do on board station, of course the re-entry as well when we come back on the Russian Soyuz, we're very, very well trained, but days are long and uh, sometimes they're filled with many, 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 many different tasks. So if anything hard about it, that would be it, just keeping mentally tied in all the time can be very trying on your mind. Uh, but uh, what a great environment, what a great place to work. I mean, you can flip upside down in a heartbeat. The floor is the ceiling, the ceiling is the floor. There is no up or down. And like Samantha said when we started, it is a fabulous time and it's a lot of fun. Thank you. My name is Connie and I go to Rory Elementary. What is your favorite you so thing welcome. in space? That's a great question, and uh, as you can see, it is so cool floating. You can go on the ceiling, you can go on the walls, it doesn't matter which direction you are, you can uh, just readapt. And after you've been here for a few weeks, you really get used to floating and being weightless, and it's really fun to be able to move around and just kind of, with no effort, flip yourself over like that. And um, for me, that's probably my favorite thing that we get to do up here. Hello, I'm Carrie Mullins. What did you have to do to become an astronaut? Well, there's different paths to become an astronaut. Um, some astronauts are uh, military pilots. Uh, most of them are also test pilots. Uh, some astronauts are scientists or engineers, and uh, a lot of astronauts have mixed backgrounds, like they are pilots, but they also have a background in science or engineering. Or, or medicine, you can also study medicine. We have also doctors um, in, among our fellow astronauts. So those are main, uh, main paths. Uh, it's important you know, to work hard in school, to do well. Um, and I like to say it's really important to choose a career, you know, before you become an astronaut that you really love, that you're passionate about, because that, that's really the, the key, the secret to being good at what you do. And, you know, when you're good at what you do, then you're also a good candidate for the astronaut program. Good 
Hi, I'm Danny Michaels, and I go to Maury Elementary. Um, mine's kind of similar to her question. Um, what pushed you all to be astronauts? And how's the weather up there? <laughs> Danny, the weather is always clear, so that's a good thing. What pushed it to be to be an astronaut? I think uh, the m biggest desire I had was to, to do the best with what the, the attributes that the good Lord gave me and to try to pursue any and everything that I could. And I wound up uh, joining the military, had a patriotic tug. And uh, as I was in the military, uh, was able to fly, was had that opportunity, went to flight school. And once I got my wings, my wings of gold, my Navy wings of gold, uh, there was no higher place you could fly or faster to fly than on the space shuttle. So, so that set that as a goal out there and thought maybe one day that might be an opportunity. And uh, eventually in 2009, I was able to do that, fly the space shuttle. And then recently, like we just said, four months ago, launched on a Russian Soyuz, and here we are now. So uh, I'm, I'm very grateful for all the opportunities. It's certainly not my, ourselves. It's many people involved that actually get us to this point. So uh, grateful to my family and all of them as well. Thanks a lot. Hello, my name is Charlotte Basso, and I go to uh, Watkins Elementary. I was just wondering, how do you move around in an anti-gravity um, environment? Hi, Charlotte. Um, like we were demonstrating before, that is uh, something that you kind of need to learn how to do, and you have to learn quick, because as soon as the rocket's engines shut down a few minutes after launch, you're weightless, and you don't have time to learn how to walk. You just have to um, do it. But it takes a little bit of getting used to, but we've been here for long enough that, that, uh, that we know how to move. You have to move very slowly at first, and if you push just with a little bit of force, I don't know if you can see my finger here, but I'll push on, push on Samantha's shoulders. And, that, and you start moving. So you have to control how much pushing and pulling you do. Otherwise, you'll go flying into the wall and hit your head on something. So you got to be careful. But um, it's really fun, and it's something that the humans can really learn how to do and adapt to. Hey, I have a question for you guys. Anybody go to Maryland schools there? I grew up in Maryland. I went to uh, school in Prince George's County in Columbia, Howard County. Uh, you got a bunch school. of hands going up there, Terry. What school? What's I hear some happening. Well, oh, you're going to ask a question. Go Hello, ahead. I'm Lambrea from Western High School. I went to Fort McHenry Elementary. <laughs> I asked a question. I went to Fort McHenry Elementary in Lanham and uh, Oakland Mills in uh, Columbia. But I'll let these kids ask some questions. They're more important than mine. Okay. Hello, my name is Lambrea. I go to Western High School. My question to y'all is, um, I heard that y'all 3D printed a tool. How is that going? Did you use it yet? Yes, we did. We had several things that we printed a 3D printer. Uh, the 3D printer has now been stashed away, and all of those items that we printed have been bagged up because we're returning them to Earth. They're going to be analyzed because before they sent that printer up here, they actually printed the same items on Earth that we printed up here, except for one, we printed also a ratchet wrench, and, uh, but the, all those things are going back. I wish I could show them to you. Yeah, but yeah, the ratchet wrench we printed was similar to this one, just a fairly small, but a ratchet wrench, and it was actually usable. You could actually use it. They wouldn't let us use it. I wanted to, but uh, uh, anyway, those are bagged up and be heading back on the SpaceX, the Dragon capsule that'll be uh, heading back, I think, around the 10th of February. So uh, that's what those are now. Hi, my name is Robert Golan, and I, I want to know, how is it like being in a spacesuit in, like, when you're outside of your ship? Or aircraft. <laughs> Robert, that is a great question. What's it like being in a spacesuit when you're outside of the ship? You know, Robert, when you get in one of those spacewalking suits, you actually get into a spaceship. It's a one man spaceship. It's got all the life support. It's got the oxygen that you need. It's got cooling system that circulates cold water so you can stay uh, cool, so you don't get overheated. Uh, the only thing it doesn't have inside is food. You can have a little, we have a little water bag, but we don't have any way to take food with us. So we can only stay for certain lengths of time. But uh, it's absolutely fascinating. The view uh, through the visor without having an atmosphere to look through, just the vacuum of space is so clear. And it's uh, just the thought that when you're outside, you, we never go out alone. We always 
send two people out. But you think about it, you're the only two people in the entire universe that are doing something like that at that moment. It's a pretty, pretty special thing. Hi, I'm uh, Nandini from the Thomas Jefferson High School, and I was wondering, before you first went out into space, what was the thing that intimidated you the most, and how did you overcome that fear? Well, I can tell you that the day that I went on the spacewalk, I don't know that there was a lot of fear, but even more so, there was a spacewalk by my two comrades, uh, Commander Wiseman, also a Navy, Navy commander, and uh, Alex Gerst. They went out on a spacewalk about nine days before uh, um, Wiseman and myself went out. And when I suited them up and got them ready, that was the most stressful thing that I have done up here because their lives were literally in my hands. I had to get their helmets on right. I had to get their maneuvering packs on right. I had to make sure that the depress of the, of the cabin went just according to plan. And that was actually much, much more of a stress because it wasn't my life that was in, in, at stake. It was theirs. And uh, that's something that's a, a very, very uh, uh, detailed process, getting someone out the door. You know, you think when you open the hatch the first time, and you go outside, you've already been in the suit for five hours, almost five hours, even before you open the hatch. And the person that's doing the most work is the one that's getting you ready to go out. And the next spacewalk, if it goes as planned, uh, Colonel Verts and I are gonna go out and Samantha's gonna have that task. And I tell you what, I don't envy her because it is a very detailed, very uh, uh, important, vitally important thing to do. Thank you. Hello, I'm Kelton and what, was this a job you wanted ever since you were a kid, or as you got older, was this something you wanted to do? I didn't, I never said. <laughs> hey, that's a great question, thanks. Um, actually, when I was very young in elementary school still, I don't think I was uh, eight years old yet, um, I already told people, adults and teachers, that when I grew up I wanted to go to space. And of course I didn't have an exact idea of what it means to be an astronaut back then, but as I grew up and I had a better idea, um, this um, thought of becoming an astronaut and going to space actually attracted me more and more. And then I was fortunate enough that growing up I developed a mature interest for, for science and technology and for flying, and, and guess what? Those are the things that can lead you uh, to become an astronaut. So it, it all came together wonderfully for me, and uh, you know, it, it's just uh, the best thing that I could possibly imagine doing, so I'm very, very happy. My name is Nicole Fogel, and what do you think the first thing you're gonna do when you get back to Earth? Well, that's, that's a good question. Samantha and I are going to land together in the same Soyuz along with our Russian friend Anton Shkaplerov. And um, Samantha and I are going to get on an airplane with a NASA crew of folks, and we're going to come directly back to Houston. But I think one of the first things that, that I'll probably want to do is get a shower when we finally get to a shower. <laughs> There's no showers up here, although um, we have towels, and basically you take a hot water, put it in a towel, and that's kind of your shower for six months. And it's actually pretty good. We, we can stay pretty clean and stuff, but that's, that's one thing I'm looking forward to doing. Hey, Butch has a demo here. He's going to show you a little bit of physics in space. Yeah, I wanted to show you all this. This, uh, this is just an iPad. Y'all y'all are very familiar with this. Notice how it's almost twice as wide as it is uh, long, or twice as long as it is wide. So because of that, because of the momentum and how that, what the, how that affects it, if I flip it just right, it will flip twice and then it will roll the next time, and it'll keep doing that. So let's see what happens. There goes the, there goes the roll. It flips a couple times, and then it rolls over. So when you guys take physics class, your, your physics instructors can explain mass moments of inertia, and... It's cool being in space because you can actually see it and see it in action. There you go. Thank you. You can go ahead. Hello, my name is Jadzia Murphy from Cardozo Education Campus, and I was wondering what kind of work or research are you three doing currently up in space?
Well, it's actually been really interesting. Uh, we just had this cargo vehicle arrive with a lot of science on board, and so we've all been busy all day, every day, even on the weekends we were doing science. Um, I'm doing a material science right now where they're measuring how materials, as they cool, how they become coarse, and how the molecules inside these um, melted liquids, as they, as they solidify, how they change. We have a plant experiment in the Columbus module, in the European module down the way there. It's really cool. It's got this big pink light, so at nighttime when you turn all the lights off, the whole station is glowing pink. And uh, we grew some plants. I think today Butch harvested some plants. Samantha was working with fruit flies. We had a experiment of fruit flies. Um, this past weekend, I was taking these back, these little worms called C. elegans, and um, we fed them some bacteria, salmonella and uh, E. coli. So they were happy at first to eat them, but these are obviously things that make you sick. So uh, they're studying how the immune system on the worms are affected by the disease, and hopefully that can help us out on Earth. So the last few days has been a lot of different science that we've been doing. It's been pretty interesting. My name is Liliana Scott, and um, I am homeschooled. And my question is, what do you do for fun to pass time in space? I think most of us really enjoy taking pictures, uh, spending time in the cupola. This is this magnificent window on the Earth we have. Uh, we see uh, the Earth from horizon to horizon, so we actually see very well the curvature of the Earth. Uh, and of course, we can also see the skies above the horizon. Uh, for example, yesterday, uh, Terry and I were hunting for uh, Comet Lovejoy, which is uh, visible from Earth as well. Uh, um, I think it will still be visible for a few weeks, so you can come and hunt for the comet yourself. So we enjoyed doing that last night. Um, I enjoy immensely um, finding places uh, on Earth that maybe have a special significance or that just speak to me because of their geography and they're so interesting. Or, you know, most of the time it's just uh, incredible beauty. I mean, it's, uh, it's an ever-changing ever colors and shapes and uh, plays of shade and light and the sun glint and clouds um, and, uh, you know, a desert and ocean and mountains and plains and snow. It's just uh, an incredible, infinite variety that no artist could possibly come up with. And it's just very, very beautiful. What are you doing there, Terry? You and what's Butch doing? Actually, he said he could see you guys. He's, show, he's showing them one of the cameras we use for taking pictures of the Earth. And uh, recently, the lab window has been free. We've been able to take pictures in here. Normally, it's got a payload in there, but so we've got these big, giant, they're almost telescopes here taking pictures of the Earth. My name is Katie Quinn, and I was wondering, what's the coolest thing to look at in space? You know, Katie, man, that is a hard to pick the number one thing because so many things are cool. And every day it's like, I can't believe I'm seeing this. You're seeing creation from the heavens. It's awesome. But for me, I think auroras. Um, being from Maryland, we don't see a lot of auroras down there around the nation's capital. And the view you get from here is amazing. You can see them with the naked eye. When you see pictures of them, they're even more magnified. But that, that is a pretty amazing thing. Hey, Butch, Terry, and, and uh, Samantha, I really want to thank you all for the time you gave us today. It was absolutely incredible for these kids. They're telling me you all have to go back to work. So uh, thanks again. Um, hopefully I will get a chance to talk to you again in a few days. Take care. All right, super. Thank you, General. Hello to everyone. Y'all have a great day. Have a great time. And thanks very much, Houston.